There we go. Hello. Good morning. It's David again. And here I am with a wonderful sister who, uh, her name is Sherry Champneys. And uh, she posted a really excellent comment. Do you happen to have your comment in front of you there, Sherry? Can you find nope. it? No. On my phone. Um, let me get there. Yeah. I didn't have that available. Let's see. That's all right. Uh, we're, uh, we're not performing here. We're just here sharing what's in our heart with our friends. In any case, while Sherry's looking for her comment, I read that comment and I'm paraphrasing here because I didn't memorize it, but she essentially said, you know, she shared this beautiful stuff that I fully agreed with. And then she said, uh, I'm only scratching the surface of what's in my heart about all this. And I was like, well, okay, let's see what else is in her heart about this. So I, uh, I commented on her comment and invited her to give me a call. And now, um, she just has a lot in her heart about, uh, the, uh, the heritage of the church the the trustworthiness of the prophets from joseph smith on through brigham young right to our marvelous prophets here in revelator president russell m nelson and and um has has really had some um experience with this kind of spreading i don't know what else to call it but just these these heretical views that are being propagated on youtube about very dark very dark very dark views claiming mm -hmm. that uh, there was some great conspiracy and that Joseph Smith never had anything to do with polygamy. And, and they're trying the, these, uh, these people on YouTube are trying to present themselves as delivering uh, Joseph Smith from this slander on his reputation and delivering the book of Mormon from the slander on its reputation. And in the process, repudiating every prophet since uh, Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. and, including President Nelson, and uh, some respects, yeah. So, in, in any case, in any case, uh, I just, I just really wanted to give Sherry a forum to just share, to tell her story. She's got a story to tell that I thought was very interesting. Do you have well, your did you comment there? Do you want me to read it? Please read your comment, and then Mike. Do you have my comment to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. These apostate LDS women are using President Nelson's October 2015 General Conference Address, a plea to my sisters to circumvent the brethren and tell them what they're doing wrong. These women say that the brethren have just been handed a false tradition, which is the church history of plural marriage, and that they don't even know any better to even ask Heavenly Father about this and that they're in a tough spot. They think that presidents Nelson and Oaks, each being eternally sealed to two wives is evil and that our temple practices because of this don't constitute doctrine. I've had several conversations with these women who are spearheading this thing and they are so deceptive as they sow seeds of doubt and distrust in the brethren, etc. They say that the whole church needs to repent of the sin of idolatry. Hmm because we listen to the Lord's prophets, seers, and revelators. I have so much to say, but I can only scratch the surface here. I've been watching this thing for several months after a woman in my ward presented this stuff to me. I have fasted and prayed much about this. And what the spirit keeps telling me is stay really close to the brethren. And then your reply, you did a couple here. So David's reply, his first reply was, amen. This is an actual cancer that is spreading in the church. As you say, sowing complete distrust of the prophet and apostles, both of today and of the entire heritage of the church since Brigham Young. To sit in judgment of the prophets of the church on this matter is simply horrible folly and apostasy. I am so thankful I can simply trust President Nelson and the apostles and stand forever in that. I am sure Heavenly Father will give them wisdom to deal with this with love and truth in the proper way and time and time. 
In the meantime, I stand forever in the foundational truth that Heavenly Father leads his covenant people through prophets and not through a sch schematic pack of unwise people, mostly women, mm -hmm, who imagine that they know better than the prophet and apostles. Much love, David. And then another one you did is, um, it's nice to hear some, someone simply call a spade a spade, i.e. these apostate LDS women. Though it seems a bit of an oxymoron. If you are apostate, how can you still be LDS? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you say, I have so much to say, but can only scratch the surface here. And then you asked me if we could do this Zoom call. So, and um, yeah, and then I wanted to read what I wrote a couple of things back to you. Um, that explain what I meant by apostate LDS. Uh, I said, first, let me say that I look to the words of President Ezra Taft Benson in his amazing talk, Three Dangers That Threatened the Church Within, when I use the term apostate LDS. And this is what he said in that talk. There are a few teachers within the church who, while courting apostasy, still want to remain members in the church, for being members makes them more effective in misleading the saints. But their day of judgment is coming, and when it does come, for some of them it would have been better, as the Savior said, that a millstone had been put around their necks and they had drowned in the depths of the sea. And then I got to read this too, because this, this is about you. <laughs> you are amazing, David. I know that, like Esther, you were prepared for such a time as this. I just happened upon your first video about the early polygamy of the Latter-day Saints, and even as a lifelong member of the church, I was brought to tears as I listened to your testimony and what the Lord told you about this. The Holy Ghost touched me so deeply as I listened to you. I have never had an issue with the Lord's eternal law of polygamy. I've always had full trust and faith in the Lord's higher laws and ways. So when I was watching that first video of yours about the early polygamy of the church, I thought at the time that it was a wonderful testimony to add to my own. Little did I know that it was to prepare and strengthen me for what was to come when a sister in my ward presented these apostate anti-polygamy ideas to me a few months later. Your experience and resulting testimony has been crucial to me in this fight for truth. I cannot thank you enough. And I pray for Heavenly Father to continue to bless you in your efforts to spread and defend truth. And I talked about how I wish I was brave like you, that I could get on camera. And so I'm trying. I've never done this before. So You're doing I'm, great. He's You're talking me great. into this. <laughs> okay. Well, and you've so, got a story to tell. Can you, can you, you you've I do. explained that you had a strong testimony of, of uh, the truthfulness of, of the church and, and of the, um, that what the church teaches is, is incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. Monogamy is the norm. Mm -hmm. but yeah when god commands it through prophets through his prophets polygamy at times is also a righteous thing if it's commanded by heavenly father through his prophets mm -hmm. as he very pointedly did when he gave the law of moses the, the gave the law to his covenant people through moses he specifically commanded them in deuteronomy 25 to practice to take another wife to wife if your brother died without having a male heir and uh, right. it, there's other instances uh, and of course it was specifically commanded and this is the thing that mystifies me i i strongly suspect that these these schismatic uh people that deny that the early polygamy of the church was of god do they completely deny the validity of doctrine and covenants? It's it seems uh, like uh, the whole focus is on section. Mormon because doctrine and covenants one thirty two Joseph Smith specifically lays out that Heavenly Father was commanding polygamy for a time, beginning with that revelation of doctrine and covenants one thirty two. What do they yeah. do with that? They want it gone. They yes. want it gone. They just yeah. consider that, that that was a conspiracy. Joseph Smith did not bring that revelation. Right. They would they have think to, that it magically showed up out of Brigham Young's desk. That that Brigham Young essentially uh 
as the most corrupt thing imaginable made that up as as being from joseph smith but mm -hmm. that it, it's uh it's a lie from the pit of hell basically yeah and so what the because i've watched this thing over the past few months um and just a kind of as, as a side note here that i've been watching what this friend of mine that presented this to me she actually I saw a comment from her under one of these women's videos and saying that she had written to the church telling them that they need to get rid of section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, so yeah. what they are saying is that the original... Okay, can you hold on for a second? Yes. Let me stop yes. you. Uh -huh. uh, I don't really want to get in, I, and I'm sorry, I I, oh, I stopped okay. the ball rolling with mm -hmm. a specific question about Doctrine and Covenants 132. I should have held my fire on that one. <laughs> it would be better okay. to lay the groundwork of you just telling your story. Here you are, this this faithful. Right, okay. If, if you could just describe a little bit about you, you know, you've, you've got a husband, you're faithful Latter-day Saints, you've got, what, six children. Just, mm -hmm. just kind of tell your story. You've had a strong testimony of, of uh, that what the church teaches, that it that polygamy was commanded by the prophet for a time. It came in by revelation, went out by revelation. And, and then here you are, you, you saw that video I made about polygamy, that, that kind of strengthened your own testimony. And, mm -hmm. and then you encounter this thing uh, with yeah. a very dear friend of yours. If you could just mm -hmm. tell us that story and I'll just shut up. I just, I haven't really heard the story fully told. I'd like to hear that whole story fully told starting with who you and your husband and your family are and, and your devotion to oh. the church. Okay. Well, my husband and I both come from polygamous lines. And so our family wouldn't be here without plural marriage. Um, my husband, his name is Matt, and we have three girls and three boys. So we had our three girls and then we had three boys, uh, kind of like the Brady Bunch. And, um, and let's see. <clears throat> We've been lifelong members of the church. Um, and uh, Matt, he served a mission in, in Texas, and I served a mission in Indiana. Um, we have uh, two of our daughters have served missions, and our other daughter got married uh, in 2020, back during COVID, crazy stuff. And she was a stalwart both she and her fiance now husband were stalwarts and said they would not get married unless they could get married in the temple even though some people were getting married outside of it and then said that it'll get sealed later but she was like no i won't have it so we that small portion of time when the temples opened for a bit for just live ceilings you know they got married and now we have a little grandson yay yeah <laughs> he's really cute and um oh gosh what i i don't know what else to tell you what else do you want to know about us um that, that that's enough so you, you know okay. go ahead and proceed with uh telling the story of how you came across this this rapidly spreading viral viral virulent teaching okay. that is leading a lot of people to essentially turn on our wonderful prophet Right. President Russell Nelson. Right. Okay. Well, like I like like we talked about that I saw your video months and months ago. Um, just happened upon it, you know. And um uh so I I felt the spirit so strongly because I needed it desperately with what was coming. And so um a few months later, a friend in my ward sent me an email and presented these women who have these YouTube channels um, and just basically said that uh, Joseph Smith, he never received the commandment to practice plural marriage and that, um, and that he didn't. And that, and this is the part that really just shocked me and broke my heart. It just made me sick to my stomach where um, but Brigham Young, he, he instituted it because of lust and he was a, an evil, wicked man. And everybody after Joseph Smith, up until the manifesto, that they were all wicked because they all practiced polygamy. And 
a few things that my friend said was like that Brigham Young had to be, you know, taken out by the Lord before the Salt Lake Temple could be dedicated. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because we had St. George, Manti, and Logan dedicated before the Salt Lake Temple. And the same things happen in all temples, the sealing power, all the ordinances. So while the Salt Lake Temple is a special temple, we already had three in Utah by that time before Brigham Young died. So anyway, so um, so she presented this to me and I wrote her back in, in an email and I wrote her back and I said, well, at first I didn't say anything. And then she wrote again because I took so long to write her back. And she said, you know, I'm not off my rocker here. And I'm like, yeah, you are. And um, and and she said, this is this is good news because this exonerates Joseph Smith. And I said, how can this be good news? You have just thrown Brigham Young and others under the bus. I mean, the things I've seen said about him. I have. It's been hard. It's been a really rough journey because I see things said about him. This prophet who we see the we see the fruits of his labors and getting the saints here. Um, I, I live in Utah, by the way, and getting the saints here, and um, and all that he did, and 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 I gotta I gotta just say first, um, I saw a comment by Cameron. She sometimes goes by Kimberly Smith. She has a YouTube channel called. Um, remaining true to the restoration. And she has a couple of awesome, awesome videos on there. And the way I found out about her was she made a comment and under one of Michelle's, um, well, now her name's out there, Michelle Stone, um, her one of her videos and said that um, she hopes that all these people who are slandering Brigham Young will one day have to stand in front of him and explain to him how they enjoyed the fruits of his labors, but then turned around and trashed him. Yeah. And I feel, I feel the same way. And so from the get-go, from the get-go, there's so much more I could say. Like I said, there's a lot on my heart. And I've been, I wasn't even able to sleep very much last night because I'm like, what's most important? And I'm just hoping that the spirit will direct me in what to say, because I've seen so much over these past few months. But my initial uh, kind of knee-jerk reaction was to defend Brigham Young when he's not here to defend himself. But I haven't really been able to do that because, I mean, I have, I've tried, but it's just, it's it's really, I found it's throwing pearls before, casting pearls before swine. As they just, I make comments uh, under these videos trying to defend him or the myriad of things that have been said and, and, I just get, I just get slammed. And then I'm just like, I'm done. And I delete everything because I can't stand it. I don't like having those precious truths out there just to be slammed, you know? And that's why it's hard for me to do this because I know this is going to get ridiculed badly. Um, at, at least I think it will um, after everything I've seen. So my, my initial reaction was I've got to defend Brigham Young. He's not here to defend himself. And I also prayed and fasted about this a lot. Went to the temple. Um, I just, it's just been on my mind. Ask my family. I haven't been quiet about it for months. They know, and they're like, mom, leave it alone. Leave it alone. It's just killing you. And I'm like, I can't, this is, I have to do something, but I don't know what to do. So anyway, um, but I, after praying and fasting and every single time, every single time I did this, the thought, the words came into my mind, stay really close to the brethren. And um, that kept coming. And I would just feel like this mantle, this cloak come around me and cover. I call it the general conference feeling is when I'm cozy in my robe and maybe with a bowl of popcorn sitting on the couch, you know, watching general conference. And I, um, I just feel so warm and cozy and safe. And I know that they are the Lord's chosen prophets, seers, and revelators. And I also feel that about all the past ones too. And there was a great quote. I, I even wrote notes. Um, there was a great quote in um, that 
you know, these things are kind of, I call them golden nuggets when I, I, I see some, or hear something in a talk that just kind of, you would miss it unless you know what you're going through something. It's like the scriptures when you read the scriptures over and over, but then you're going through something and then you read them again and, oh, it's like something opens up, you know? So in, um, in uh, President Nelson's recent general conference, April, 2024 general conference address, rejoice in the gift of the priest of keys. This jumped out at me and said, uh, he says, um, then in the Kirtland temple in 1836, the conferral of these three additional priesthood keys, namely keys of the gathering of Israel, keys of the gospel of Abraham and keys of the sealing power was essential. These keys authorized Joseph Smith and all succeeding presidents of the Lord's church to gather Israel on both sides of the veil, to bless all covenant children with the blessings of Abraham, to place a ratifying seal on priesthood ordinances and covenants and to seal families eternally. The power of the priest, these priesthood keys is infinite and breathtaking. So that part about, and all succeeding presence of the Lord's church, that really, I went back and listened to that again afterward. And that really, really, that's our answer right there is that our prophet has said all succeeding presidents, all succeeding presidents of the church since Joseph Smith on. Brigham Young was the chosen prophet that the Lord chose for the task that he needed to do. To do. And these people have all sorts of, like they were never supposed, to, they were cursed because of polygamy. And so that's why they were exiled out and they were supposed to stay back there in, in Nauvoo and all that. It's crazy. Um, but no, the Lord wanted him here and he chose Brigham Young to do that. Um, and I know that, and that's my testimony of Brigham Young. So what, what happened with this, uh, this close friend of yours who got, oh. caught, who got caught up in this, this is, uh, this, this is, is an ongoing saga. Um, well, uh, we texted a lot back and forth. It got a little heated, which I didn't like, but with me and my husband and her, and she didn't like what we were saying. And basically that what she was getting into was an apostate type situation. And, you know, she was saying that plural marriage is not of God. And we were just, and there, there's so much, I just don't even know how to, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. Um, we, my husband and I teach primary together uh, and we have, we had uh, one of her children, her son in our class and um, she's really angry at us. And so she pulled him out. And so that's where it stands right now. And I pray all the time that the Lord will lead and guide and direct this, this thing. Um, because where I see what I see happening is there's a lot of spreading of doubt and distrust in the brethren and it's leading people. I cannot tell you how many comments I've seen under these women's videos where people are questioning whether they should stay in the church, which is really ironic, you know, because they're saying that polygamy, our, our church history of plural marriage is like with you, like with you, it almost kept you out of the church. And so they're saying, see, we've got to fix this. But the, the irony of it is, is that when people see, when, when they believe these things about Brigham Young on, and then they start to distrust our current prophet, seers and revelators, they also say, I don't even know why I'm still in this church. So one way or the other, they got one foot in and one foot out. And I've seen these women also, both of them that I'm talking about. They, um, not my friend though, my friend Stalwart, and she's staying in the church, but I, and, and these women are still in the church, but I've seen them both grapple with whether or not they should stay. They call it the Brighamite church, you know. That's but, what they call the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They call it the Brighamite church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's all the people who came west so, with Brigham Young. So fundamentally, they're they're saying that Brigham Young was an evil man, and mm -hmm. 
just because he was a, a lustful beast, he cooked up this polygamy thing. Joseph yes. Smith had nothing to do with it. Brigham mm -hmm. Young uh, plagiarized or or pretend he, he wrote Doctrine and Co Brigham Young wrote Doctrine and Covenants one thirty two, mm -hmm. and and stuck that somehow stuck that in Doctrine and Covenants. So basically, there's this giant conspiracy, right? historical conspiracy like somehow they roped helen mark kimball for example into saying that she was sealed to joseph smith but it never happened yeah it's just, yeah. It's just a pack of lies all of yeah. these these dozens these not hundreds of people uh and and so the the apostolic and prophetic anointing and the priesthood keys that were given to joseph smith were not effectively handed off to bring right. them well there's and there's an interesting like there's some people who say that and so they say there's no authority since joseph smith and so president nelson doesn't have that authority today and then there's others like my friend who says that kind of like wicked king noah that you know um that uh brigham young was he had the keys but it was kind of like a Alma, the elder experience after all those plural marriage <clears throat> men, the prophets, right? After they were gone, then there was kind of an Al Alma, the elder experience. And so they had those keys, but then when they got past all the plural marriage and all those prophets were gone, then there was an Alma, the elder experience, and, and he had the keys and, and he was able to turn them. He had the authority to turn them. To that, I say, uh, no, <laughs> because if these men were really these evil, wicked men, as my friend and others say, that amen to the priesthood of that man. There's no, there's no carrying that on. And so, and, and others say that there was a second restoration after all the plural marriage prophets were gone that there was a second restoration so i've heard all sorts i've seen so all basically, sorts of people. basically it's a confusing mess oh, which is, it's, which is what you end up yeah. with yeah if you let go of the prophet right and you lean on your own understanding right uh you a prophet is analogous to a king in a sense it says in the book of proverbs mm -hmm. or actually this is in the book of judges it says there was no king in the land in those days. Therefore, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Everyone to his own way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. See, this, this is yeah. this is the thing that's that's so flabbergasting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the hook of this, see, I don't really want to talk in specifics about these women and their channels and stuff because I don't want to give yeah. them more. I don't want to give them specific advertising. That's how I feel but too. Women in the church are coming across this. Yes, a and lot. This is being the, the people that the the people that buy into this. Most of them women, not all, but most of them women. They become extremely evangelistic, and the hook of this, as I understand it, is it's like they they're not selling, betraying your covenant, betraying your covenants. Uh, turning on God's prophet, uh, throwing in the garbage the history and heritage. This is not what they're saying. The hook of it is this is good news. This vindicates mm -hmm. Joseph Smith, and this vindicates the Book of Mormon. So, right. so the the hook of it is here's your chance as as a heroic woman to ride to the rescue of the reputation of Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon, which have been horribly slandered by these lies that they have anything to do with plural marriage. Because plural mm -hmm. marriage, the, the absolute, the absolute of this, this heretical schismatic group, their absolute is that polygamy is like the worst thing ever. It's an absolute. Oh, it's, it's from it's, Satan. It's from Satan. It's from the mm -hmm. pit of hell. Right. Uh, it is impossible that God 
could have ever had anything to do with polygamy. It's utterly impossible that God could ever command polygamy under any circumstances. Right. Which, first of all, it's an absolute repudiation of the teaching of the church ever since Joseph Smith, ever since Doctrine and Covenants 132, mm -hmm. which is the teaching of the church has always been that right. Heavenly Father established monogamy as the norm for human beings, but mm -hmm. when commanded by his prophet for Heavenly Father's own plans and purposes, polygamy can be a righteous thing when commanded by God's prophet in a particular time and place for reasons known to Heavenly Father. And, right. and other than that, monogamy is the norm. And this is what the church has taught. Uh, right. And and so this is a complete repudiation of that. Yes. And and the the noble, the, the motive that is pretended to be the noble motive of this heresy mm -hmm. is we have to vindicate the reputation of Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. The, right. the problem the problem with this of course i just want to list a few problems first of all to me it's the most precious thing on earth to me my life has finally become simple mm -hmm. you know, it, the way so of truth, it says that the way true. of truth is so simple yes a child can understand it as it yeah. says as it says gloriously in isaiah 35 verses 8 to 10 that a highway shall be there, there, a way called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall be for those, a wayfaring man, even if he's a fool, he won't be able to err therein. Mm -hmm. you know, no lion yeah. shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the, mm -hmm. the, the, the essence of the simplicity, the childlike simplicity of the kingdom of God is, we hold on to the heavenly father we can't see and the Jesus Christ that we can't see by holding on to and trusting the prophet that we can't see. Oh. You yes. Know, it, it's yes. like, it, fundamentally, you know what? You know who I trust completely? Mm -hmm. Who do you think I trust completely? The Lord. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ completely. I trust heavenly mm -hmm. father completely. You know how mm -hmm. I know I do? Through like trust President Russell M. Nelson completely. <laughs> That's exactly. And, and so specifically said <laughs> to his apostles, said, He who receives you, he who trusts you completely, trusts me completely and trusts right. Heavenly Father completely. Right. He who rejects you, he who doesn't trust you completely, doesn't trust me completely and doesn't trust, right. trust my Heavenly Father completely. So I trust. President Nelson completely. And you yeah. know, trust him yeah. completely because he inherited the priesthood keys from President Monson, who yes. I trust completely. You know who else trusted him completely? President Nelson trusted him completely. Yeah. You know, I trust President Monson completely because he trusted who was before him. Gordon uh, Hinkley. 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 He uh -huh. trusted President Hinckley completely. <laughs> and, and you see, it's like the priesthood yeah. keys and the the, the authority the as prophet of the church has been handed mm -hmm. on from Joseph Smith to Brigham Young and to the other 15 successors to President Nelson. And so I know who to trust. I trust right. Heavenly Father and I trust Jesus by trusting President Nelson. And I trust whoever trusts president nelson yes yes you and know you know what? if i is... if i'm talking to you if i was talking to you if i met you on the street and you were somebody else than you are obviously you trust the prophet but if i if like if like like this this woman that has been posting and attacking me for supporting polygamy she is a disciple of these people is. She's I, don't trust, I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her. And believe no. me, I couldn't throw her very far. I, uh -huh. <laughs> the way I don't trust her, because she doesn't trust the prophet. And if yeah. she doesn't trust the prophet, she doesn't trust Jesus or Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. You know what? When somebody doesn't trust the prophet, I don't care if they have a temple recommend. I don't care how persuasive they are. I don't care if they've got a list of reasons that they have bought into longer than their arms and legs for mm -hmm. all the reasons why 
uh, uh, Brigham Young was an evil deceiver and, and why all the other prophets since him have bought into this and the church is deceived and now they need to be rescued by these yeah. static women. You, you know, they, they could have a list of reasons as long as there are. Mm -hmm. They can be articulate and persuasive. They can have they can have this huge case that they've built. Mm -hmm. But I don't even need to sort it out. All I know is, do you trust the prophet? Right. You don't trust the prophet. You, you it's think, the child you like you know. You think you know better than the prophet. Guess what? You're not trustworthy. Right. You start to attack the prophets, to attack the authority of the church, and to to basically they've turned into scriptura sola, sola scriptura evangelical Christians who, who they, they take their own interpretation of a book mm -hmm. and they want the church to be led by their interpretation of a book. Mm -hmm. Nobody authorized them to interpret that book. Mm -hmm. And the church of God, Heavenly Father's covenant people, from the very beginning, it's God's plan that they be led not by a book. They're led through prophets, right? You know, well, this is this is how they're led, and the 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 foundational lie of this that I mean everything springs from this. That the foundational lie that they bought mm -hmm. is that polygamy has to be always of the devil. Our heavenly mm -hmm. Father, He's holy. Polygamy is inherently evil. He could never command or look with anything but horror and condemnation on polygamy or anything, anybody that had anything to do with polygamy. Right. And the, the problem with this is it's just not true. Right. You know, it's not true. This is the fundamental problem with it, is it's just yeah. not true. But in service of that lie they'll throw Brigham Young under the bus. The church wouldn't exist without Brigham Young. You it throw wouldn't. Brigham Young under the bus, you throw all the other prophets under the bus. Right up to this present day, mm -hmm. two of the most noble human beings on the face of the earth, President Russell M. Nelson, mm -hmm. President Oaks and President Nelson have both been sealed to second wives. And right. unless one or both of the wives don't want to cooperate with it once they're in the celestial kingdom they're going to be yes. married to two wives in the celestial kingdom and yeah. and mm -hmm. so essentially exactly. from brigham young to elder oaks and president holland and mm -hmm. by inference everything in between they're just of the devil okay yeah. and unless they unless they repent in dust and ashes and exalt these silly women to be rulers of the church Oh yeah. They're yeah. just they're just uh demonically deceived and of the devil. Yeah. Because the the ruling lie is that polygamy is inherently evil and God hates polygamy under any and all circumstances, which yeah. is a, de a direct repudiation of the clear emphatic teaching of the church, but more than that, let, just let me lay a few a few reasons yeah, why no. this is so ridiculous. First of all, First of all, Heavenly Father uh, commanded through Moses that polygamy under certain circumstances had to be practiced or it was sin in, in Deuteronomy 25 when he commanded whether a man was married or not, if your brother died without having a male heir, his brother was responsible. His his, his wife, the, the widow, was commanded not to marry somebody outside of the family, but she was to be married to the surviving brother, and he was to take her to wife and be her husband, at least until she had a male heir. And of right. course, it's, it's not like he was supposed to divorce her at that point, but he was to raise up seed unto his brother, that his brother brother's line would continue in Israel. So this is a special circumstance where Heavenly Father actually commanded polygamy. If polygamy is inherently sinful, God could not command it without ceasing to be God. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. You, you have the example in, in, um, in King David's life when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and the prophet Nathan comes in and rebukes him. The prophet Nathan very specifically tells him 
that when Saul had died, that Heavenly Father had given all of Saul's wives to David. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. that this they they say like they say you know show us in the scripture show well you show them in the scripture and they don't care they don't care what the scripture says oh they twist it they twist they everything ignore it or they will twist it or yeah. or they will say like you can't twist doctrine and covenants then you have doctrine and covenants 132 where mm -hmm. just like under those specific circumstances during the time of mosaic law polygamy was not only allowed but commanded in doctrine and covenants 132 heavenly father makes perfectly clear that that the polygamy that was practiced, say, by Abraham and Isaac, and, you know, the polygamy that was practiced by the patriarchs was not an abomination to him, which, of course, is obvious because the covenant people of God are what? We're the seed of Abraham. Yeah. You know why we're the seed of Abraham? Because Abraham was the very first human being that Heavenly Father looked down and said, look, I know I can trust you completely because mm -hmm. you trusted me completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and it said that Abraham was called the friend of God after mm -hmm. the fall of man, the first human being that came along that heavenly father considered to be qualified to be his friend was Abraham who had mm -hmm. Sarai and then took Hagar. And then afterwards more. You know, can I stop you there for just one sec? Let me sure. stop you there. So I've seen the runaround with that too. Is that I've seen them say like that because Abraham took Hagar, that the Lord didn't make His covenant with him until after all of that. He he had repented of that and then had sent Hagar away, and so they. I've seen all sorts of this, you know, but he was a righteous man. Would he, would we, would he give him all of somebody who had done such a horrible thing? You know, would he? Well, later on, later on, Abraham took numerous concubines. Mm -hmm. So and, it's like. And this is specifically referred to by Joseph Smith in Doctrine and Covenants 132, which is why you, you have to. You, you have to basically throw Doctrine and Covenants 132 out, which they means that you can't yeah. trust any of it. No. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know, th this whole thing. But it's all eternal marriage is in there too. You know, it's and, like, it's all gone. Of, you know? of course, the contacts I've had with some of these women, mm -hmm. as far as they're concerned, where this ends up is you can't trust uh, Brigham Young or anything that came after Brigham Young, you have to completely disregard the actual history of the church and pretend it's a complete conspiracy to uh, believe all of this historical fact that Joseph Smith actually did under the direction of Heavenly Father, by revelation, bring polygamy into the church. Mm -hmm. You have to completely disregard all that. And you have to disregard, so you have to throw the doctrine and covenants out. You have to throw the continuing power of the restoration of the priesthood and apostolic and prophetic authority out, or not. You can try to game that because you can, you can realize, oh, this is, this is like, wow, what, what, what do I have to hold on to? Well, you don't have, if you can't trust the prophet, you don't have anything to hold on to. No. You know, it's it's no, like it all falls apart. this is really what it comes down to mm -hmm. it, it's like this is so much like this this is very much it's the same spirit that the the uh that handful of people that back in the 1930s were excommunicated because they refused to accept the teaching of the church that the polygamy that came in by revelation in the eight, late 1830s went out by revelation in 1890 and mm -hmm. they, that's not God. That's not God. Polygamy is to be practiced always by everybody. And and so they ended up developing into the fundamentalist church of Latter-day Saints. Right. right? And, right. and so, you know, their whole thing is they know better than the prophet. Polygamy didn't go out.
by by revel, prophetic revelation in 1890. That's a giant conspiracy. You miss God. And, <laughs> and these people are, well, polygamy didn't come in through Joseph Smith. It, it didn't come in through prophetic revelation. It came in from the devil through mm-hmm. Young. And and uh, it didn't come in by revelation. So essentially, they, they're, they're starting the exact reverse sect of their own that that instead of not believing that polygamy went out by prophetic revelation they refused to accept that it came in by revelation and right. in order to do that they have to and where this ends up with a lot of these women is they essentially repudiate the temple because the temple is a giant scam that doesn't all point the truth is the temple entirely points to jesus christ mm-hmm. okay as as our pathway to get through the veil into the celestial kingdom but in their mind the the temple is this giant scam to to channel everybody into plural marriage mm-hmm. and and yeah. so it, yeah. it's like they they don't trust the temple they don't trust no, they don't. President nelson they don't trust trust elder oaks they don't trust any of the prophets since joseph smith that have cooperated in 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 um what's been taught you know mm-hmm. the plural marriage came in by revelation went out by revelation they, they're all everybody's disqualified everybody is disqualified yes. but they, they're the only ones that aren't disqualified so mm-hmm. essentially where you end up with and, and this of course is if if this whole thing could be described as a giant council mm-hmm. they're satan they're the ones that have the, yeah. they're the ones that have the plan and the understanding that should be determinative and everybody else including heavenly father who you know of course they they think they're they're the ones that are actually heavenly father's true champions but the truth is that heavenly father really do. All, all the polygamist <laughs> his his first friend on the planet and yeah. and, and heaven heavenly father brought forth the the very foundation of the 12 tribes of Israel through a polygamist family of Jacob mm-hmm. and his two wives through which the 12 sons of Jacob came forth that are the progenitors of the entire 12 tribes of Israel. So this entire descendants of the 12 tribes that we're laboring to gather, they're all descendants of a polygamist family. Exactly. And, but exactly. this was the foundation of the covenant people of God. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, so personally, it's like everything goes in the bin. And, and so th- this is this is the spirit of pride where where just Big like they, he exalted himself to want to be above Heavenly Father and and have his counsel be determinative. And that's okay. exactly where these women are at. They, they think they, they've given themselves to the same spirit of thinking they know better, which is the essence of Satan. Satan from the very beginning, mm-hmm. he knew better. That's why right. he that's why he was never he's disembodied. He's not yeah. worthy of a body because he thinks he knows better than Heavenly Father. And these yeah. women think they know better. They know better. They, they don't know better. They they have, have remade Joseph Smith in their own image mm-hmm. because they know better. And yeah. they have thrown everything else except their twisted interpretation of the book of mormon and their twisted understanding of their remaking of joseph smith in their own image everything other than that goes in the bin it all goes in the garbage it's all thrown under the bus yeah and it gets it, it, it gets, and from there let me just um stop you for just one sec i mean i already read that in that um comment that i made um but they believe that um well that well this is where it gets dicey is because what these women believe and what my friend believes are two different things so what these women believe is that that all polygamy not of god nothing and um and let me go with that and then i'll get back to what my friend believes okay so it's weird um so they believe that because we hold on to this evil tradition right of plural marriage in our in our church history um you mean rather than repudiating the whole thing as having always been not of god and it was a huge mistake well 
yeah well no that we that the way that the prophet teaches it and that it was a good thing and that it was glory like you said it was glorious and it was a sac it, all those things you know because we believe that way as a church that we are held under condemnation and just curse yeah because of this hanging on to this belief that plural marriage is of god that he commands it when he sees fit and that okay so so there, my mind's going a million miles an hour. I'm just trying to okay. hone in on it. So they, so the, the law of plural marriage, all of it was given all at once is an eternal law of God. So it, and it was on the earth until it wasn't supposed to be on the earth anymore. In fact, as I, as I understand it, Wilford Woodruff did go to the Lord when things were getting really hard. And the Lord said, still, no, you, it's still supposed to be practiced. And, but things were getting really tough. And so then he goes again and says, can we stop now? <laughs> you know. And then he said, yeah, it's time to stop. But the eternal nature of it never did because it's still in our temples. Yeah. And that's why President Nelson and President Oaks are sealed eternally to two wives. In fact, I was at a, at a, uh, our family was at a, a devotional uh, thing, gosh, years ago, uh, the Marriott Center of BYU, where President Oaks, then Elder Oaks, he came to speak and he had, already lost, lost his first wife, um, uh, June, and he was married to Kristen and he was talking about her in his opening, you know, before he started talking about his subject. Um, and he said, just simply, he said, and she is now the eternal companion who stands by my side. And my husband leaned over to me and said, there's a lot of doctrine there. <laughs> and it's true. That's what it is. It never left. The practice of it on the earth did, but it's still in our temples. And so what these women say, at least one that I've seen say, she said that the, that our temple practices don't necessarily constitute doctrine. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if because of that, they not only constitute doctrine, they constitute the purest doctrine in the mm -hmm. entire church. Mm hmm. You yeah. Know? Okay. Now let me, let me get back to my friend now. Okay. So my friend though, she believes that, uh, all these men were wicked. I've seen her say that she wrote to the church said 132 needs to go. And she says, it's like, she talks out of both sides of her mouth. She says, um, that plural marriage is not of God. And I am quoting her not of God, but then because our prophet and his first counselor are each sealed to two women and there's others obviously we have neighbors just right across the street same thing um and that that's the so there's an exception there but it's not of god i mean it doesn't make any sense it's not of god but there's an exception because actually i i see why she has to say that though because then she would not be sustaining the prophet and because she would call him evil and wicked too. And she cannot stay in the church that way. I've asked her, why do you stay in a church where the prophet is doing something that you call not of God? How can you, how can you do that? You know? And um, I, I just looked this up last night, just uh, to jar uh, my memory here. Um, about the temple recommend interview question number seven is do you support or promote any teachings practices or doctrine contrary to those of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints if they're answering no on that question they're lying if they they're answering, if they're answering if they, if they say that they they're not promoting they, anything, yeah. that they, they're, if they're absolutely not promoting, lying they're absolutely lying. lying through their teeth but they they're do lying. these mental gymnastics where they go well okay i'm not promoting any any uh, anything that's contrary to the true doctrine of the church <laughs> and the yes, true doctrine of the church good, is what they, is 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 their heresy yeah. and so i you know and i am sustaining the prophet and i'm 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 only promoting the true doctrine of the church yes that's what i'm doing but the, true doctrine of the church is their heresy and the prophet they're sustaining is yeah. joseph smith only and not the real yeah. joseph smith but the Joseph Smith that they've made remade okay. in the image of their heresy. Yeah. And yeah. So, you, you know, it's, it's like, 
it's just absolutely bonkers. It is. And and let me go on. I got a few things more. It just keeps coming. I told you yeah, I got a fine. lot. That's fine. <laughs> we can go on as long as you want. I don't know how many I people I don't long. know how many people will be up for listening to this, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'm trying. I just, I just think it's important that that there's the old saying: "Forewarned is forearmed." Yeah, absolutely. Okay? And absolutely. and essentially, the voices from the great and spacious building, mm -hmm. the accusatory fog, is not just something that is outside the church. I mean. In in truth, so it, it is much, all outside the church. I have so much to say on that too. I mean, all I have all, so much to say on that. All I'm saying is that yeah. if somebody does not trust the one prophet on earth that is truly a prophet of God that holds all the keys to the priesthood, if they mm -hmm. don't trust him, that will tinge or right. deeply right. affect every right. single thing they think and say to anyone mm -hmm. and their voice is immediately transformed into a voice from the great and spacious building but they're your it good is. friend and and they're they're teaching they're teaching primary uh in the class next years so you're mm -hmm. like well you know how can they but all you have to do is not trust the one mm -hmm. who holds the priesthood keys and you become someone who, if people heed you, it says they heeded such people not, because as many as heeded them fell away. Right. I don't even want to engage these women. I would not engage these women in conversation. Yeah. I, I mean, this one woman that uh, has been posting comments of, about my defense of polygamy, she, mm -hmm. she, you know, show me, why can't you show me in... I've shown her in the scriptures. And then she says, well, show me in the scriptures. I show her, she says, show me in the scriptures. And of course, yeah. the one scripture that I would show her, of course, if 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 she can't explain away what, what God commanded through Moses or what he said through prophet Nathan, or the fact that the first friend of God that were the seed of Abraham practiced polygamy or that the progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel were the 12 sons of Jacob that came from plural wives, or I, I could go on and on, you, you know, right. fundamentally, Doctrine and Covenants 132 is what it is. And they're like, oh, well, that, that was made up by Brigham Young, that Joseph Smith did not say that, that, that that's not even discussable. But, but, mm -hmm. you know, so now, now you're determining what scripture and what isn't, who mm -hmm. died and left you in charge of that, you know? <laughs> It's just yes, it's it's a private bizarre. interpretation. So right? it, it, these these people are not even worthy of talking to. If you heed them, they will destroy your faith. It's that yeah. simple. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's oh uh, gosh, um, you can't get anywhere with them, can you? When no. people are really bought into this, they no, just you attack can't. you, right? If you try oh, yeah. to, if you try to give them reasonable answers to what they're saying mm -hmm. they will just disqualify them and attack you as a mouthpiece of satan because you're defending the evil polygamy that this right. is their ruling passion is that polygamy is utterly evil and always from the devil right yeah that's absolutely 100 percent. except for my friend who says well because our prophet is sealed to more than one wife you know then there's an exception but it's not of god just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, people, people will yeah. just use anything they can to try and justify believing yeah. what they want to believe, while still not giving up what they don't want to give up. Right, right. It's it, and mental gymnastics. It's the best term for it because I cannot believe what I'm seeing. So, more mental gymnastics. Okay, so because we follow, and I I mentioned this in in my comment, but just to reiterate that because we follow a prophet. We give and that we heed his words because he's the Lord's mouthpiece on the earth. That's right. That we are the whole church is under condemnation uh, because we are and we we need to repent. These women have called us to repentance for the sin of idolatry because we follow a prophet, and that because of this sin, that the reason why we don't have the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. Is because of this sin of idolatry, number one, 
that we're following a prophet and that we hold to what they teach about the Lord's eternal law of plural marriage. That because we're holding to those things, we follow a prophet, that we're under this condemnation and because we're, we need to repent of the sin of idolatry. And, and if we don't do this, we will never get the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. That's what they think. So. It's, it's, uh, it's just a fantasy. This is all fantasy. Yeah, it, it, they, they have, no, they have seen, no authority. They have no authority or basis for coming. That's up. what it comes down to. My husband and I have had had many discussions about this. I've talked his ear off, and he's been so good. But that's what it really comes down to: is they don't have authority. There is no authority, and why? I've seen you say this too. Why should I listen to them? Who yeah. are they? No, that's you know? it. It's like people, people like. That these women and any men that are have thrown in their lot with them, uh, mm -hmm. they have they they have like you know somehow by some miracle of God, I can speak with a measure of authority to the extent that I trust the prophet. Yeah, you know, yeah. if I don't yeah. trust the prophet, I'm just one of a thousand billion. Mm -hmm. main religious opinions do you know right. it's it's right. like it, it's it's so incredible that that we actually are led by the in, by the god we can't see by our heavenly father and his son jesus christ we are actually led on earth by a living prophet who together and he's he's not a lone ranger. He's got two amazing counselors, and that threefold cord that's not easily breaking broken is not a lone ranger. They have a quorum of twelve that is right with them. Those fifteen men and their wives, who they listen to, and mm -hmm. you know what? That that those fifteen men and their wives, they're not lone rangers. They've got the ninety five seventies with their wives, and they're all together, and they're one on all this stuff. Yeah. They are, and, they and they have to be. There is has never out. been a united apostolic and prophetic leadership on the earth of the incredible kind of quality that has existed in the Church of Jesus Christ since Joseph Smith organized the church and was successfully that organized organization and authority was successfully passed on and has been passed on. And that's why that authority exists on the earth, because it was successfully passed on. And God has been with our prophets from the beginning, or this church would have been wiped off the earth. It would. And, and it would. There, there is no true sp spiritual voice of authority anywhere on earth other than that which agrees with the prophet, you know? And, mm -hmm. and that, that people think that they're doing God's, these people think they're doing God in the church service by attacking the authority of the church based on their own twisted understandings of scripture and, and being willing if a scripture, if they can't twist it, like you can't twist doctrine and covenants one thirty two. Oh, Joseph, that Joseph Smith didn't write the Brigham Young made that up. That's just, that's, that's not in there. Do, do, do these people realize that what they're saying, like if polygamy is entirely of the devil, the most glorious families in the church from the beginning that have borne the most, most fruit have been the polygamous families. And our family, our family there's yes. literally yes. been like, like uh, this uh, Peggy that I, I interviewed the other day, the, this yeah. generation, there's 20,000 of them, but you yeah. know, that's, that's, that understates it because that's just the current generation. Maybe the previous generation, there was 13,000. And the generation before that, there was 10. The generation before that, there was seven. And we'll keep going. The generation before that, there was 3,000. And then, you, you mm -hmm. know, like her her, uh, her father, I mean, her great, you know, her original, yeah. the patriarch of her clan had 42 mm -hmm. children. And now it's 20,000. Mm -hmm. You add that all up. From that one plural marriage, mm -hmm. from that one plural marriage, yeah. You have what is it? Probably fifty thousand saints have come. At least. So, At and, least. and this is this is not abnormal. Most of those early polygamous families 
they not only had children, they had children that were solid as a rock in the faith and continued to carry on the faith that had been handed to them and, and bore tremendous fruit. And, you know, the idea that, so, so basically what, what this is saying, if you add that up, I wouldn't be surprised if of the 17 million in the church right now, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if two or three million of them are descended from these polygamous families. I mean, yeah. I've got emails from people that said that they were in the MTC, the, the Missionary Training Center in 1985, and it was asked, how many of you are descended from polygamous families? And, you know, yeah. half the people raised their hands. It's, <laughs> it's like, it, yeah. so all these people should never have been born? Yeah, that my husband and I were talking about that last night, is that because we're both from polygamous lines. It would have been better that, if you'd never been born. Right, that our, because polygamy is evil, plural marriage is evil, that our family is essentially evil. Well, the thing is, no. it's like, if if something's evil, and you try to build something on an evil foundation, mm -hmm. you know what happens? It falls apart. It blows up. It bears mm -hmm. horrible fruit. But this yeah. is not, this is not the fruit of these polygam the fruit of these polygamous families has been glorious. It's yeah. been absolutely glorious. And so, yeah. so this, this really, I mean, I don't mean to overstate it, but it just, it just sickens me that to me, this is just the spirit of the accuser of the brethren coming in through these people that have been wooed by that spirit into thinking way too highly of themselves and thinking they're doing God's service by trying to make the church and all of those people who have this heritage to try to make them completely ashamed of a heritage, their heritage was a heritage of obedience of faith that bore great fruit that was directed by our Father in heaven for the specific purpose of establishing a church that apart from that would have been wiped off the earth. And, right. and to try to, this is, this is the devil's calling card it's like these are the fingerprints of his touch the mm -hmm. fingerprints of his touch sherry it's like is he tries to make the most glorious thing shameful he tries yeah. to paint light as darkness and darkness as light and evil as good and good as evil and, and you know I, these that's what i see too from these women they really get into that it was all about about love. I, when I watched your um, your video about it, that it's not about the sex. It was about obedience and sacrifice. These women really go after that part of it. It's like yeah. they're obsessed with that part of it. Like yeah. it was all about sex. You know, it was all about lust. You know. And I read a scripture the other day. You're so good at the scriptures. Maybe you know where this is, and I can't remember where it was. Um, about in the last days that um basically that they would focus on the sensual do you know that scripture about the word sensual was in there and i'm like that's these women they're all about that this is all about sex and everything you know and yeah like, it's it's a scripture let, let, me, let me find it for you here hold, hold yeah, on you know what i'm talking about yeah i think so i think it's in james that sounds familiar it's talking about wisdom from above versus wisdom from beneath mm -hmm. i think that's the one but you're so good at this. I, I'm amazed by your knowledge of the scriptures. Yeah. See, that this that is an I'm so glad you brought that up because that is exactly right. When you, when I read this, you you this is exactly it's it's like natural earthly wisdom, and the fruit of it is horrible. This is what it says. It says, okay. uh, and where are you? Where okay. is it? This is James chapter three. Verse 13. Okay. Okay. And to me, verse 13 describes President Nelson and President Dallin Oaks and Brigham Young and all the prophets that have come since then, as well as Joseph Smith, of course. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation. And of course, in the King James English, conversation is not what you're saying. It's your way of life. Uh, uh -huh. way okay. let him show out of a good conversation his works with the meekness of wisdom 
But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. For this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom, now this verse 17 and 18 is about our prophets, starting with Joseph Smith right up to President Nelson and all of the general authorities. Where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work for wisdom, the, the wisdom that sendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, mm -hmm. gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And you see, yes. this this is what simple trust in the prophet brings is mm -hmm. from above. But this, right. this distrust of the prophet, you, you try to uh, discuss this with with these people, they just attack you. They, they despise you. They mm -hmm. they their their arrogance and their their sensu their earthly sensual and devilish wisdom from beneath mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. evident in what they say and in how they say it and in their very spirit and the very fact that they're attacking the prophet and trying to tear down the, the very church that essentially gave them birth they've turned on and they have under the pretense and I, i'm sure they're sincere about it they honestly believe that they're called by god to to deliver the church from its heresy and and to re redeem the reputation of joseph smith in the book of mormon from these lies that have been heaped heaped on it uh and slandered by brigham young and all the prophets that have come since and including president nelson who who bought into all the lies by getting sealed to a second wife and yeah. so the whole thing, it's just like, it's such a can of worms. It and, is. And it is. so, you know, I'm just like, yeah, it's yeah. bad. It's bad. It's, and, you know, um, you bring, I love that's you found the that profit. I mean, what, what yeah, you, you know, the, the most, yeah, to be a disciple, we're supposed to deny our very selves. Jesus said in, in Matthew, I think chapter 10, he said, if anyone would be my disciple, he must deny his very self, pick up his cross daily, and follow after me. Mm -hmm. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Mm -hmm. The essential thing we have to deny our very self of in order to be on the highway of holiness and stay there is simply to refuse to accept the poisonous idea that we know better than God's prophet. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's that simple. It yeah. really is that simple. So I'm not yeah. I'm not willing to get drawn into contention over this stuff. You don't yeah. trust God's prophet. Your yeah. voice is you you're not even in the church anymore in truth. Mm -hmm. Your voice is from the great and spacious building. Yeah. You know, the what the church teaches is true. Yeah. Heavenly Father in his own times and places has been fine with polygamy. Most of the time, monogamy is normal. This is obvious to anybody who knows the scripture. Yeah. This is obvious. And yeah, you know, this yeah. is what the church teaches. And we, we should just hold on to what the church teaches. That's and if exactly people, it. People want to make up their, if people want to start their own denomination and separate from the church, this is what, oh. these people, what these people are in the process of doing. They might not realize it, many of them, but this is where they're headed. And they, right. they will because the, the devil's behind what they're doing. Yeah. You know, he's the one that's divided against himself. And he's the father of all division, which is why he divided in the council, in the pre-mortality. Mm -hmm. And it's why the, the, churches, the, the churches that he has been holding sway over Mm -hmm. for the last 2000 years are divided into 46,000 different Christian groups and denominations. And, right. and so he's the father of lies and the father of division. And, and uh, th this is, this is where they're headed because they, they are, they, they know better. But they don't see it. They don't see it. And yeah, it, it, there, 
gosh, I have so many thoughts. Um, that's why I go back to we, okay, we weren't there. That's uh, like one of them asked me to, to, to have one of my, my child, one of my children, my teenagers read Jacob 2.30 and and so if you haven't indoctrinated them yet and told them what you think it means, have them read it and see what they say. And I I read that to my husband because this is a comment to me. And he said, we don't need a teenager. We have a prophet. Exactly. And he's already done it. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, see, there's nothing wrong. It's normal that we are we are supposed to not make any prophetic scripture of private interpretation. That's a command yeah. in the same book of James that this Joseph Smith that they claim to be defending went mm -hmm. into the grove on the basis of he lacked wisdom and he asked God, like James says in chapter one. But yeah. James specifically says that, whole, that no prophecy is of any private interpretation. Right. It's, it's the prerogative of the prophets to yes. really divide the word and help us to, to guide us in a right understanding, just, just like that Ethiopian eunuch that was uh, uh, driving down the road in his chariot and Philip runs alongside and the mm -hmm. eunuch stops and Philip jumps up with him. This is in the book of Acts. He says, what are you reading? Mm -hmm. and the eunuch was reading. He was a, a eunuch of great authority under Queen Candace of Ethiopia. And he's, he says, I'm reading Isaiah 53. And Philip asked him, well, do you understand what you're reading? And the, the eunuch, he was humble. He said, how can I understand this unless I have somebody to guide me? You know? Yeah. But, but of perfect, course, perfect. Of course, yeah. these, Ample, these, yes. these people, they don't need yeah. anybody to guide them. Mm -hmm. they, it, it's it's like evangelical Christianity all over again. Creeping, creeping into the church of Jesus. <laughs> it's like, you know, God spoke to me. You know, I've got the book. And this is what it means. Oh, this chapter doesn't agree with what I think all the rest means. So I'm going to toss this chapter out. And yeah. and I'm I'm I don't need the prophet to tell me what it means. I don't need anybody to guide me. God spoke to me. I'm going to start my own church. And yeah. this is how every one of the forty six thousand denominations got its start, man. This is how they all got their start. It. I mean, I you have to either laugh or weep. Because it's yeah, I've been weeping a lot. <laughs> absolutely, it's absolutely tragic. It's just yeah, tragic. hard to watch. So it's anyway, can, can you can you take fifteen seconds? I'll give you thirty if if you if you need it to uh -huh. just prayerfully ask Heavenly Father if there what you can say kind of in summary because we can only go so long with this. Before, I know. But I can talk. Speak. Like I said, I got a lot to say. I know. I know. Well, like I said, like like you can chew on this. And if, yeah. if we feel the need, we can do it again a month from now. Okay. But let, let's okay. not try and and uh, solve the entire problems of the world uh, today. <laughs> In one video, um, you know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I just I just think if if there's something going on like this that is really troubling, you, you just want to expose it and you, you know just get the light, shine the light on it. So what, yeah, what can sunlight you, is the best. What can you say in conclusion? Um, well, first, before I go there, I got two, th I think two things. Um, one is I've seen them struggle with staying in the church. And so they stay. It's just like that quote by Ezra Taft Benson. There are a few teachers within the church who wish to remain members because they're more effective at misleading the saints. So right, exactly. they are going to, they want to change it. They want to change it. They're not leaving because they want to change it. Second thing that I really want to, I'm wrapping up, I promise, um, is that this hit me like a deer in the headlights. I have my husband's brother, like I told you on the phone, he left the church um, years ago and anti ex mormon all that. And um, he fights like crazy against it. And so I expect, I served a mission. I had to defend Joseph Smith from the outside coming in. I expect that. I expect that from people who have left the church, people who don't, who aren't non-members. Okay. So I expect that. And I've had to defend him. And I gained a testimony of him because I had to defend him so much. 
so this hit me like a deer in the headlights. I did not know what was going on. I was like, what is this thing? I hadn't heard about it at all. And I was just listening to President Nelson today again about the things that were coming. And I did not expect this, where I was going to, it wasn't about defending Joseph Smith anymore. And it wasn't coming from outside anymore. It was coming from within. And I had to stand up and 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 defend Brigham Young and all those other wicked prophets who were following God's command to practice plural, plural marriage. So that's why I've been so upset about it because I didn't know what hit me. I was like, what is this? And I, and I got to say one more thing about my patriarchal blessing. I shared this with you already, but I, I want to do it for the video is that I'm, I'm warned specifically, and now I can see it. I'm warned specifically my patriarchal blessing. It says, there are many who would desire you to follow them as they follow the devil, which would result in darkness and suffering coming to you. And hello, that is what's happening to me right now. And so it's been a really rough road. Um, so in, in wrapping up, I, you shared this scripture. I love first Corinthians chapter two. You shared this, just wrap up. This is, this is my testimony because this is how it feels to me. Um, first of all, when I was reading the whole thing, uh, yesterday, um, this is how I feel, um, about me doing this right now is, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear. Oh, I've been so afraid to do this. And in much trembling, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And that's what I feel. And then um, another nod to Cameron Smith. I, she, she used this because um, I could go through this whole thing, but. What is the name of Cameron Smith's channel? Uh, it is remaining true to the restoration. And she has done her homework. That girl knows herself. true to the restoration. Can you Being send true. me the link to her channel and I will post it in the description? Absolutely. Okay. And this is where she opened this because uh, she has a rebuttal video against one of these women. And then another one about specifically about Joseph Smith. Did he teach against polygamy? And it's just an, oh, I can't remember what she calls it, but you'll see it when you go to her channel. But she opened with, for what man knoweth, and this is what I'll end with because this is my testimony. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. And I know you're so, you used that the other day in another video. And I love that because that is my testimony is that I feel these things. And my friend was like, I don't understand why you feel darkness about this. I feel light about it. And I'm like, I have never felt light about this. And the spirit has told me, stay really close to the brethren. And it's the spirit that bears witness to me that what these people are doing is on a path. Oh, one more thing too. Greg Matson, I think it was him. He said something along the lines of, he said, the mists of darkness, you can only, the reason you can see that there, that there are mists of darkness is because there's just enough light to make out that they are mists and so there's just enough light there you know that's how satan works he takes a little thing of truth like in the in the garden of eden you know you shall not die shall be as the gods knowing good and evil yeah yeah they would but it was just that you shall not die that was the only lie he told in the whole garden of eden situation with adam and eve and so that's what it is, is that they take this, they take, they have a lot of truth and, 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 and they encapsulate a lie within the truth. And it, it goes down from there. It just line below line. And they don't see where this is going to end up. Something's going to happen in the future. They're not going to be able to trust the prophet because they're not trusting him now. And little by little, it'll be dragged down to hell. That's, that's what I see. Well, just just one little comment on that. Um, mm -hmm. 
it is, of course, it is wonderful that, that we, we have to be led by the Spirit and we have to have a testimony based on, like I didn't feel any light, I just felt darkness. The problem, as you noticed in your friend's response, she just felt light, no darkness. How can you feel darkness? Yeah. So, so these things, they can be subjective. And the reason why they can be subjective, this is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. Mm -hmm. Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no mar marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The leaders of this, these women, are presenting themselves as, as essentially messengers of light, uncovering... Mm -hmm the truth to vindicate the reputation of the founding prophet of the restoration and to vindicate the glorious book of Mormon. And so this is good news. This is a cause worth of embra embracing. We can all be Joan of Arc together. And, <laughs> and, and you know, and it's, it's a very attractive lie, mm -hmm. you know? And, okay. and so if, if you, if you listen to that, you go, wow, this is so great. Finally, now I see, you know, it, it's like it, 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 you can have real revelation and you can have false revelation. You can have light that is actually light from Heavenly Father, and you can think you have light, but your light is actually darkness. You can think you have wisdom, but your wisdom isn't from above, it's actually from beneath, and it's earthly and sensual and devilish, but that doesn't mean it feels like it. Right. You know, right. it feels, it feels good. It feels good. And, yeah. and so this, this is why, this is why there's a sense in which I think we have a responsibility. And I think this is particular, I, some people say this is a sexist statement, but it's just true. It's like <laughs> women in general, not always, but often women tend to be more emotional mm -hmm. and, and, so you can, it's, it's more easy to kind of get swept away. If something makes you feel good emotionally, like, Oh, we're going to clear the, the reputation of our wonderful prophet. Joseph Smith has been slandered and the book of Mormon is being slandered. And, you know, this is so glorious that we can clean this up and the church will listen to us and we can, you, you know, I mean, it's, it, it seems, yeah. it seems like light, but I, all I'm saying is that fundamentally, even if something like like the whole polygamy thing when i was being drawn i was like man this is just too weird and i was like this is darkness i can't deal with this mm -hmm. and, and I, I i cut off the investigation and and then i was just cut to the heart by yeah. our father in heaven and i just i just had to repent and i had to say look i have sat in judgment of something i had no business judging Joseph Smith and the polygamy of the early church, Brigham Young, the polygamy of the I had no business judging. Please forgive me. I just want to be humble, even if you make a Mormon out of me. And, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 yeah. and from that moment, glory broke out in my life. From that moment, because who does Heavenly Father give grace to? He gives grace to the humble. So yeah. all, I, all I'm saying is that Objectively, even, and you know, a huge part of the reason why why I humbled myself like that was because I had started listening to mm -hmm. President Nelson's conference talks, and I knew that this was a, this was a man of God. This is a prof, the prophet of God. This man yeah. carries the authority of the priesthood of God on planet Earth, and nobody else does. And I sensed that powerfully. And I, I was like, the, the, uh, all I'm saying is that regardless of how we might feel, whether something feels like darkness or light, the safety is I'm going to trust the prophet. Right. Even if it doesn't feel warm and fuzzy, it, right. you, you know, even if it's challenging, even, even if I'm really struggling with what he's teaching or how he's teaching but of course that hasn't happened no but but initially 
accepting what the church taught about polygamy, that it came in by revelation, I, I just really struggled with that. And then what delivered me and allowed me to actually find faith and become a Latter-day Saint was, I'm just going to trust you, Heavenly Father, and I'm going to trust your prophet. And it, that's that, awesome. ultimately, that's what sorts it out, because this, this woman thinks she feels all warm and fuzzy. She's found the light. How can you sense darkness in what she's believing? You know how you can sense darkness in what she's believing? She's contradicting God's prophet. Absolutely. She's rejecting God's prophet. So it doesn't matter how much she thinks it's light and how warm and fuzzy. If she had a foundational of under, understanding of, of how to stay in the middle of the covenant path in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, she would know that it doesn't matter how attractive the teaching is or how groovy it makes her feel. If it contradicts God's prophet, she needs to she needs to disregard it, not listen to it, because as many as listen to it are going to fall away. And she yes. just needs to trust God's prophet and stay in the middle of the covenant path and be humble. It's it's right. like you know that being humble and trusting the prophet is the only thing that sorts that sorts everything out everything out and that is exactly it david that is exact that has been my answer from the very beginning stay really close to the brethren yeah that's stay what you heard really close to the i keep hearing that too and it just i just when i think about all this stuff it makes me feel so anxious and dark and everything and then i and then when I'm on my knees praying and that comes again, it has come so many times because I needed it so much. And I always feel so much. I just call it my comfy, cozy feeling. I just feel so good about that. And, and, and that they haven't said anything like this. And, and they, these women think that they're not, they're not asking the Lord. They're, they don't know any better to even ask about it. So they're not getting an answer of like, that's ridiculous. Of course, they've asked the Lord about it. They're, they're Presidents Nelson and Oaks are, are sealed to two wives. Of course, they've asked about it. And but they think that they don't know any better and that they're just stuck following See, a false it's, tradition. It's, it's just so nuts. I mean, the, these men. I don't think there's been a more glorious other than Jesus Christ. I doubt if there's been any more glorious human being on the face of the earth in the history of the world than President Russell M. Nelson. I, I mean, Amazing. there hasn't been a human being leading the covenant people of God at the age of 99 since yeah. Joshua was winning the battle of Jericho, leading the people of God into the promised land. This hasn't yeah. happened in 3,500 years. Yeah. And you, you think of the life he's lived. And the glorious fruit that his life has borne in every imaginable way. Yeah, but that's they, like they, all think, <laughs> they think that they think that he's dull and just he's just clueless and doesn't really understand what they understand. The, yeah, the, they arrogance, don't even... the arrogance of it is breathtaking. The only thing that you can compare it to is uh Lucifer rebelling. Because God chose Jesus' plan over his, that that Heavenly Father, that he knew better than Heavenly Father did, yeah. uh, and that Heavenly Father was, was just dull and just really didn't understand yeah. the issues involved when he chose Jesus over Lucifer. It, yeah. it, it's the same thing, man. It's the same spirit. It is. It it's is. the same spirit. Let me read one comment here. Sure, sure, sure. Just if I can find it. Let's see. Where did I put that puppy? Okay. Okay, this was BC Mountain USA. Perhaps the intent of the anti-polygamy doctrine and its proponents, whether all such proponents realize it or not, and I, I don't think hardly any of them do, is there the intent of the evil one that's behind this is the total invalidation of the priesthood of God and its ordinances. Following the reasoning presented by such proponents results in the following catch-22. Abraham and Jacob each had more than one spouse concurrently. Thus, a plural marriage is of the devil. The blessings promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Bible were promised by God to evil men. 
which leads to the conclusion that either an omniscient and omnipotent God made a mistake or the Bible itself is completely false. It mm -hmm. appears like this anti-polygamy doctrine does not stand the test of logical analysis. Uh, yeah, that's, but, that's a really great comment. Yeah. yeah I, I thought that was a good comment. So yeah. in, in any case, in any case, you, you know, I love what you said about how you just feel, what was that thing you feel about just cozy and comfy cozy? It's, I love comfort. I'm, that's my personality. I, I know, and... but you said you just feel like safe, like. Oh, I feel safe. I call it my general conference feeling. Your general um, conference feeling. Yeah. See, when, when I just, when I just, no, I'm not going to listen to this. I don't even want to discuss. I No, I'm not going to try and answer your list of 132 reasons why you, you think the prophet shouldn't be trusted. Just, just yeah. go away. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to hold on to uh, President Nelson's hand. And by yeah. holding on to his, I, I'm, I'm like a little child snuggled on my daddy's lap. That's how I feel. I'm, I'm snuggled uh. on President Nelson's lap because by snuggling on President Nelson's lap and just being enfolded in his yeah. uh, prophetic and priesthood mantle. Yes, I, the mantle. I, the I, I folded, I'm enfolded in the, the wonderful, uh, glorious arms of my Savior Jesus Christ and my Heavenly Father. And do you think yes. I'm going I'm to climb off God's lap to yeah. contend? To contend yeah. with your, with 132 reasons why I shouldn't trust Heavenly Father and His Prophet, I mean yeah. it's just it's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. The whole thing is ludicrous, and um, yeah, I, I hope we can continue to uh, talk about how ludicrous it is <laughs> when, whenever whenever we're prompted by the Holy Ghost. But in the meantime, yeah. Yeah. can you close us in prayer now? I would love to, love to. Thank you so much, David. I just oh, you're I appreciate. So much. This has been like healing balm for my soul because I have so much to say, but I don't have platform. I'm not brave, you know, like you to do this. And so and hey, you're very brave. You're, you're doing great. You you <laughs> just you just broke through a barrier, and yeah. uh, it, you know you didn't like break out in hives. You know you, your head, <laughs> your head <laughs> has your head hasn't fallen off. Uh, the barbarians are not at the gate trying to beat down your front door with pitchforks and torches. So, yeah. you yeah. know, the, yeah. the devil's calling card is just to try and scare us into yeah. not bearing witness to the truth. Yeah. But we, we exist yeah. as saints to bear witness to the truth. Yes. And, uh, and you've done it today. So good for you. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity and asking me to be here. It's been so wonderful. I just feel so like I finally done my part and it feels yeah, so good. You have. <laughs> you've done your part. Good for you. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I will pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this wonderful opportunity that we've had to have this wonderful discussion about thy truths. And we say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. That was wonderful.